أما بعد عن أسماء بنت يزيد رضي الله تعالى عنها قالت كنت جالسا مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذ كان ابنه إبراهيم يجود بنفسه فكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يبكي على ابنه فقال له عبد الرحمن بن عوف يا رسول الله أنت تبكي وتنهان عن البكاء فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عبد يا أبا عبد يا عبد الرحمن إنها رحمة إنها رحمة قال إن العين تدمع وقلب يحزن واللسان لا تقول إلا ما يرد الله قال يا إبراهيم إن بفراقك لا محزنون أسماء بنت يزيد رضي الله تعالى عنها she said, I was sitting with the Prophet وسلم, while he was at the bedside of his son, Ibrahim, while he was taking his last breaths of life. Ibrahim, his son, who was only 16 months old at this time. Just imagine a man losing his child at 16 months old. Barely had an opportunity to play with the child. And this opportunity was for the Ummah to see the human side of this great man that we see as a soldier, as this messenger of Allah, as this teacher, educator, but we rarely get a chance to see a human side of the Prophet And he wasn't afraid to allow that side to be exposed in front of his Ummah. Because that's part of teaching the Ummah as well. That we have a soul, we have a dual nature. We have a human side to us. And then we have that side that tries to image or mask that human side. We spend a lot of time, you know, investing in what we would like people to believe we are. And very little time in who we know we are. And that's a problem. That's a problem because we spend a lot of time being, you know, what we think people should see instead of who we really are as individuals. And it's okay to be human as Muslims. It's okay to cry. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to feel emotion. It's okay. I don't know how many marriages I've counseled and the you know, couples don't hold hands. They don't kiss one another. They don't tell one another they love each other. I mean, for crying out loud, you have Muslim husband and wife who will tell each other, I love you for the sake of Allah. Like, I mean, like, I, for the sake of Allah is already implied. Just say, I love you. It's okay. You have new Muslims who come into Islam who ask questions like, can I still love my, my non-Muslim mother, my non-Muslim father? What type of religion do you think this is? The Prophet Wasallam stood at the grave of his mother and he cried, Bukat and Shadi'an, and cried profusely. And the Sahaba asked him, why are you crying? He said, because I know my mother is going to be in the hellfire. His mother died as a mushrik. Who can tell you not to love your Muslim, your non-Muslim parents, your non-Muslim relatives? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi You cannot guide whom you love. And that ayat was in reference to Abu Talib, who was a non-Muslim, who was a mushrik, and died on shirk. I, how could you ask, is it okay for me to love my non-Muslim parents? What type of religion do you believe this is? That we just function robotically, we don't have feelings? The Prophet ﷺ began to cry over his son. Ibrahim, 16 months old, <gasps> taking his last breaths of life. Can you imagine staring at your son in your hands and he's taking his last breaths of life? And the Prophet sallallahu his eyes begin to water with tears. I saw one of his companions sitting with him, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, one of the ten that was promised paradise. He looked at the Prophet sallallahu and he said, Ya Rasulullah, a'anta tabki wa tanhana ala al-buka. He said, O Messenger of Allah, are you crying when you prevent us from crying? Are, are you crying? SubhanAllah. As if I'm not supposed to cry. 
My son is taking his last moments, his last breaths, right in front of me. Am I not supposed to cry? Sometimes we, we run into calamities, we run into trials and tribulations in our personal lives. And then when we express that and we share that with others, they tell us, you know, just be patient. Believe in the Qadr, it's the Qadr. Okay, I believe it's the Qadr, but does that mean that I'm not supposed to cry? Does that mean that I'm not supposed to be human and feel what humans feel? Don't, don't ever say, you know, believe in the Qadr or be patient in an attempt to make me suppress my feelings as a human being. I'm a human being. Don't make me suppress my feelings. Because when you suppress something, it only comes out in another way, and sometimes a more unhealthy way. Cry, it's okay. Complain, it's okay. But complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Complain to the one that can help you. It makes no sense in complaining to someone who can't change your situation. Ya'qub alayhi salam, he said, Inna ma ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. I complain of my grief and my sorrow, my disappointment, my frustration. I complain only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the only one that can change my condition. But, I, but we complain. It's okay. It's okay to feel pain. It's okay to feel frustrated. But don't make people suppress their feelings and by scaring them, by saying things to them like, you know, it's, it's the qadr of Allah. I know it's the qadr of Allah, but does that mean because I believe it's the qadr of Allah that I am not supposed to feel pain? That I'm not supposed to feel frustrated? I'm not supposed to feel disappointed? The Prophet Sallallahu is crying over his son. You don't think he believed in the qadr? You don't believe he understood the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He's the same one who told this ummah, لِلَّهِ مَا أَعْطَى وَلِلَّهِ مَا أَخَذْ To Allah belongs what he gives and to Allah belongs what he takes. If he gives you a son, it's still his. If he takes the son away from you, it's still his. To him belong what he gives, and to him belong what he takes. But does that mean that we don't feel pain? Does that mean that we don't cry? The Prophet Sallallahu cried. And Abdurrahman asked him, O Messenger of Allah, even you cry? He said, yes. He said, Abdurrahman, it is Rahmah. It is out of mercy that I cry. It's out of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I cry. Think about the society that we live in. We hear and we see murder in droves on a daily basis. And many of us, we feel nothing because it's so normal. Just imagine a situation where you see death, you hear about death, and you feel nothing. The rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is slowly being removed from our hearts. We have been desensitized by murder as the Prophet ﷺ prophesied that towards the last day there will be al-haraj, al-haraj. He said, this sahaba said, what is haraj? He said that it's murder, excessive murder where the person murdering doesn't know why he's murdering and the person being murdered doesn't even know why he was murdered. This is a time that we live in where we see murder, murder, murder. Our kids hear it on the music that they listen to. We see it in the movies that we watch. We hear it on the news. Just yesterday in Iraq, there was 15 people. ISIS killed 15 people at a, at, a, at a checkpoint. We hear it on the news. It does nothing. We don't feel anything. Just another day. Another incident. But think about someone who the moment they hear murder, it affects them. It affects them to such a degree they cry. The Prophet said, Abdurrahman, it's mercy, it's rahmah that I feel anything. Think about how many relatives we've lost in our lives. Someone calls us and says, such and such died. And we say, oh, you know, sorry for your loss. <laughs> sorry for your loss. You see how insensitive that sounds? Or you may be talking to a friend, and they may express that they lost a relative, a mother, a grandmother, a son, daughter, and we may say, I'm sorry for your loss. That is so insensitive. Sorry for our loss. Because anytime we lose someone from the human community, it is a loss to everyone, especially if that individual was influential and had a positive impact on their environment. It is a loss to all of us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that if you kill a soul, it's as if you kill all of mankind. It's our loss, not your loss. That's insensitive. 
And so the Prophet وسلم, in ending, he said, <clears throat> he said, the eyes make water with tears, and the heart may feel pain. He said, but the tongue will only say what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And although I cry, I shed tears, and my heart feels pain, disappointment, frustration, all of those feelings, those emotions. He said, but my tongue will never say except what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the ultimate standard of self-control. Self-control. When you control yourself, you control your surroundings. You let, you let yourself, you have control. The first victory, as is an old saying, the first victory that great men have ever won was the victory over themselves. You cannot be a leader if you don't have self-control. You cannot be a leader over anything or anyone if you don't have self-discipline. And self-discipline starts with controlling your emotions, controlling your actions, and controlling how you interact with other people. And this is what our religion teaches us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu wa ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslima al-kathira wa akhira da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.